By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are in Zaandam, the Netherlands, for the Zombie Cup 3. And uh, we're going to look at multiple matches. This is the first video in a series of videos. I've got videos all the way up to the finals for you. And I'm really excited because this is kind of a special edition. Normally the Zombie Cup plays according to the Swedish rules, which means uh, no Fallen Empires. But Derek, the organizer, wanted to celebrate 30 years of Fallen Empires. So that's why we are playing with Fallen Empires today with the side note that him to Turek is restricted. So just a little recap of, of the rules. Swedish means no mana burn, uh, only one strip, and in this case, Fallen Empires is added, but him to Turek is restricted. Now, if you're into rule sets and stuff like that, it can be quite hard to follow in old school. There's so many custom rule sets. Uh, please check out the description below because I always mention the rules in there. Now, um, in this match, I am playing with a black and red deck. I've called it Orc Quake. So it's a deck uh, built around the card Orc and Earthquake. And I'm really excited to, to show this deck to you. I'm just also excited to see how it's going to work. And I'm taking on Filco, and Filco is playing a white and blue deck build around Slide of Mind. So it's really cool to play against a, a classic Slide of Mind deck again. I, I haven't done that in ages. Now, um, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I'm gonna tell you more about it in the deck deck section. But first, like always, you can also choose to skip the deck deck uh, section, go to the matches first. I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So just click on MTG Games. It'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find more information about the Timmy Talks Patreon page. That is patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Um, and there you can find out how you can become a super supporter of the channel, uh, which already starts for just $1 a month. So if you enjoy uh, what I do, if you like the videos that I make, please consider becoming a patron. It's thanks to the support of the patrons that I can continue making these videos for you guys. So please consider becoming a Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to continue with the deck decks, and I'm actually gonna start with my deck, Orchquake. Let's have a look. And here we see my deck, Orch Quake. So this uh, deck is built around the beautiful creature, Orch. It's just one of my favorite creatures in Fallen Empire. I like it so much. It's just a dumb big creature, right? It's 6-6 six, six Trampler for 2 red and 3. What's not to love? But it's got a downside, pretty big one. It cannot attack if uh, my opponent controls an untapped creature with power 3 or greater. It cannot block a creature with power 3 or greater. And it's got this just hilarious flavor text that says, it's bigger than it thinks it is. So um, this is really cool, it's such a cool creature. And um, I wanted to build a deck with it. So I thought, okay, I need to put cards in there to tap creatures down, right? Because if they're tapped, I can still attack with my orc. So then of course I added icy manipulators. But then I thought, wait a minute, you also have paralyze. Paralyze and orc, they seem to go hand in hand. So I put uh, paralyzes in there. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute, one black enchant creatures, we also have weakness. I think weakness in general is a little bit underestimated. Um, there are so many good 1-1 one, one creatures that you can just, you know, kill. It, it also kills a Savannah line, for example, for one black, which is quite nice. So weakness gives minus two, minus one. And in this deck, of course, it's in there to make sure the power is low enough so I can continue attacking with my orc. I mean, think about it. Some of the most popular big creatures in old school are usually for power. That's it. You've got Sarah Angel. You've got Urnum Jin. Um, you've got Sengir Vampire, you've got Suchi. So all those creatures I can kind of get to power two with just a weakness. And then I can attack with my Orc. That's what it's all about, right? And then I thought, wait a minute, Orc is six toughness. It's really big. So let's play with Earthquakes. So I'm playing Earthquake. I can play an Earthquake for five, kill a Jusum Jin, and my Orc survives and I can attack with my Orc. And then I thought, okay, if I do Earthquake, why not add Rook Egg to the mix? Rook Egg, an O3 creature, and when it dies, you get a 4-4 red flyer at the end of your turn. So this deck kind of built itself. And then I figured out, okay, so I've, I've got um, this earthquake strategy. So I want to have creatures with a lot of toughness. And then I ended up with it win a free. It win a free three red for a 3-6. So it's really synergizes really well with the earthquake. And then I thought, okay, I've got all these creatures with a lot of toughness. Oh, I've got a diamond valley. So I put a diamond valley in there. So this deck kind of really designed itself. Um, and another card that I kind of want to highlight in this deck uh, is the card Fisher. Uh, Fisher is a card two red and three, card from the dark, uh, destroys target land or buries target creature. 
And the problem, of course, with this card is it's really good, but it's five mana. It's pretty heavy on the cost. So usually uh, when you're under pressure, for example, against a, a, a green Stompy deck, I'm just giving an example, uh, you know, Fisher is not going to help you out here because it's way too slow. I think in this deck, it could be good. Why? Because I've got Weakness, I've got Paralyze, I've got two Lightning Bolts. All those cards are really cheap to cast and can help me if I'm under pressure at the early stages of the game. Later in the game, if there's a really big creature, I can deal with it with Fisher. And what I like about Fisher is I can also destroy a land with it. So if there's, for example, a Mace, I can also destroy a Mace of If with it. So what, when I was building, I had to kind of choose between, am I going to go Stone Rain, Terror, or Fisher? And then I thought, well, with this specific deck, I think Fisher is better. If that's the case, we will find out. Um, I am a little bit concerned about COP Red because I am playing against... Uh, uh, a, a white blue deck today now i have a few answers to the cop red because of course i thought about it and that is a nefneral's discs i'm playing with two of those and i'm also playing with uh, two flash fires so i'm kind of trying to attack the mana base so that's kind of my strategy if i run into uh into a cop red but hopefully i don't hopefully i don't uh talking about that let's take a look at the deck of my opponent Filco and his slight of mind brew and here we see the deck of Filco. So this is a blue and white Slight of Mind deck. And I mean, this is such a classic deck. Like you already saw these decks in Alpha. They were one of the first kind of combo decks, right? Where two card, well, actually Slight of Mind and all the cards around it, you try to work with them. And the classic combination, of course, was Slight of Mind with Northern Paladin and uh, the White Knight. So it's really cool to see that coming back. Maybe first just kind of focus on Slight of Mind and was it what it does. So Slight of Mind is an instant for one blue that says change the text of target spell or permanent by replacing all instances of one color word with another. For example, you may change target black spell to target blue spell, and this effect lasts indefinitely, yes. Um, so the cool thing is if you have a Northern Paladin, right, which is a 3-3 creature, two white and tap, destroy target black permanent, what do you do if you're playing against, for example, me who has a lot of red permanents? Well, then you play Slide of Mind and you change that word black into the word red, and all of a sudden the Northern Paladin can kill my orcs, right? So it's just really cool. And of course, this works together well with the white knight because protection from black can be changed in protection from red, whatever color you want to choose. Um, and he's also playing with the exorcist, which is super cool. You don't see that card often. Love the art by Drew Tucker. Um, this is a creature human clerk, um, a 1-1 one, one for two white from the dark and for one and one white and tap and destroy target black creature. So you can change that again and destroy target whatever color you need with your slide of mind so it's super cool of course uh, he's also playing with the pump knights um so he can do that as well with slide of mind because they have protection black he's got circle of protection red in the main so he can change that to whatever color he needs in this matchup though he doesn't need to change it at all and um yeah so we see that cop red main so i'm a little worried about this matchup uh, it's looking like a good deck as well because when you're playing with blue and white it means you've got access to of course the blue power but you also have psionic blasts in this case and white gives you access to all those great control cards disenchant swords to plowshares you can just wipe the board with that so this is looking like a fun deck but also a strong deck as well and hopefully we're going to see some slide of mind shenanigans that what that's what i'm really looking forward to but i think in all honesty this is not a great matchup for me because we have cop red main and because of slide of mind he can give his creatures protection from um from red, which is going to be difficult for me. Although then I can still, I guess, play my weaknesses and my paralyzes, so it's something. But I mean, a Northern Paladin that says destroy target red permanent, that's going to be really, really tough for me to deal with because he can, you know, he can kill my uh, all my creatures basically with that. Also with the Exorcist. So it's a problem. I mean, I've got some removal in the deck, so I just got to keep my fingers uh, crossed. And, uh, and hope for the best. But yeah, it's, it's looking like a really good matchup here uh, for Philco. On the other hand, this is magic, of course. You never know what cards you're going to pick and what cards you're not going to gonna see in the game. So there's a, there's always a chance. But um, yeah, it looks like a really, really fun deck. Thank you for bringing it to the table, uh, Philco. Just uh, very, very cool. And by the way, he was dressed in the theme as well. He was dressed as a preacher, which was uh, was really funny. So I'll, uh, I'll, sh I'll actually show you a picture. I'll edit it in, in, the, in the video. It's, it's really cool. Really nice guy as well to play against. So, um, yeah, we've talked about my deck. We talked about Foco's deck. So that only means one thing. We are ready to go to the first round of the Zombie Cup number three. Here we go. Game number one. Here we go. I'm sitting on the left taking a mulligan here, it seems. So starting with six in hand. 
I believe Foco is keeping his seven. He's sitting on the right. So I'm playing with a black and red deck built around Org. And my opponent Filco is playing with a blue-white deck built around Slight of Mind. And uh, we're just having a slow start here, both of us. Just a land drop and a go. And there is a Batlands. Ooh, there's going to be some action. Okay, there's a Soul Ring passing turn. So maybe next turn I could start playing Org already. That would be great for me. Oh, there's a Black Lotus, though. What's going to happen here? There's a Plains. And okay, there's a white knight 2 2 first strike protection from black. So it looks like he's not going to do anything yet with the black lotus. It looks like I'm a little bit in the tank. Maybe uh, I want to respond. Nope, untap, upkeep, draw. You know, if I have, for example, a fisher, could consider fisher on end step. There's a city of brass. So now I've got five mana. Let's go, Orc. Let's go. Let's do it. I'm tapping out, taking the damage. Is it going to come on the board? Oh, there it is. Six, six powerhouse, baby. And of course it can attack now because the white knight is a two, two. So remember, it cannot attack if opponent controls a creature with power three or greater. Untap, that is. And it cannot block any creatures with power three or greater. So, I mean, one of the things, of course, Philco can do now is um, sack the Lotus play a Northern Paladin. That would be a 3-3, so then I can no longer attack. Or, of course, just play a Swords or something. He is playing with White, of course. So, has access to uh, a lot of uh, easy answers. But maybe he doesn't have those answers, and then they can swing in. Okay, here we see uh, an Island. Does he have a Slide of Mind? He can give it uh, Pro Blue. Ooh, there's an Exorcist. It would be so cool if he has a slide of mind. He could change the exercise from destroy target uh, black creature to destroy target uh, red creature and then destroy the orc the next turn. But if he doesn't, I can swing in with my 6-6 six, six trampler. That will be uh, pretty exciting. He's passing the turn. Okay, here we go. Let's swing in. See what I can do. Okay, there's a strip mine attacking with the 6-6. Six, six. Oh, look at this. Four damage for Philco. Gonna strip the island here. It's gonna have a blue floating. Can I put some more pressure on the board? Maybe a second orc? That'd be quite nice. Tapping three. Taking the damage. Okay, there's the eight winner freed a 3-6. That's a great blocker, of course for uh, the creatures of uh, Filco. Now do remember though, the Itwin Freed, if I want to block with it, I've got to flip. Oh, whoa, look at this Slide of Mind. I wouldn't say I got to flip a coin. He's playing Slide of Mind with that floating blue mana. Now he can destroy target red creature. Uh-oh. I think my Orch is, uh, is a goner. Yeah, there he goes. Wow, and what a match this is. How often do you see this happen? A slide of mind on an exorcist used to destroy an orc, right? It's so cool. But I'm in trouble for sure. I need to get rid of that exorcist. I mean, that's definitely step number one. And there's the pass. Okay, so at least no more pressure. But I mean, that, that exorcist is a big problem. Now remember, I'm playing with weakness. I'm playing with Paralyze even, could be an answer now. Um, I'm playing with Bolts. I only have two cards in hand though. So that's not a lot. Okay, and there's, I guess the dice kind of marking that is now red. But, uh, oh man. Yeah, first swinging in for three, that's kind of the no brainer part. So putting Philco on 11. Tapping five. Could there be a Fisher? Maybe. Yep, there's a Fisher. Playing the Fisher. Yeah, this is really, really important. Had to take care of the Exorcist. But I, I think if you're Philco, you're quite happy because um, he did his job. Got rid of the Orc, the big scary Orc. I wonder what other cards he's got in hand. He's, he's pretty low on lands, it seems. Only having those two planes. Okay, there's a Tundra. That helps. Has, of course, the Black Lotus. He's going to sack the Lotus. 
Ooh, there's a Northern Paladin, but I'm not too worried about it yet. Unless he's got, of course, a slide of mine. There's the attack, so I'm going to drop here to 15, of course, taking two points of damage from my own City of Brass earlier in the match. So 15 against 11. There's the attack. Yeah, 3-6 is so tough to deal with. Ooh, going to take another damage. Going to tap two. Ooh, Demonic Tutor. One of the things I could look up here is uh, an Earthquake. Could play an Earthquake for three. And I could do that straight away by second that uh, Fallen Empire's land. The Dwarven Ruins. It's really, I really like those lands, by the way, from Fallen Empire. So they come into play tapped. And then you can also, then you can just tap them in this case for red. So you've got them in every color. But you can also tap and sack them and then they give double red. So it's really quite nice when you've got the blue one because then you can just keep that one land open. I think it's called something something temple. You can tap it, it gives you two blue, so you always have kind of counter magic. Um, but it's also great, for example, the white one if you combine it with an Armageddon deck, so and a land tech. So there are a lot of like synergies with those lands. Anyway, picked up my card. I wonder what it is. Ooh, I'm gonna sack it. Must be an earthquake. Earthquake for three. Wow. That is pretty rough. Philco dropping to five, and I've taken care of two of his creatures as well. So this is like a bolt to the face and destroying two creatures, which is pretty amazing. And look at this, no answer from Philco anymore. Just a pass turn, so I can swing and put him on two. There's a City of Brass. Gonna take some more damage. What am I gonna do? Going to drop to nine, I think. And uh, what am I going to play? Maybe another It Win Freet? Another It Win Freet. Passing the turn. Last turn here for Philco. He's kind of a miracle. Balance will be really good. Oh, winning game number one. Remember, it's just game one. He's shaking my hand because he's a nice guy, but it's just game one. But uh, wow, that was a very spectacular match. And I'm just really fortunate that I had that Fisher against the Exorcist or else we would have had a completely different game. And of course, uh, the demonic also kind of helped to take care of those blockers uh, on the side of Philco. So yeah, this was just game one though. So we're gonna dive into our sideboards and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Philco on the play after losing that first one. Let's see what he can do. I'm a little worried though, because after sideboarding, he can put in uh, even more cards against my deck. I think he's got a blue elemental blast, for example, in the sideboard. Starting here with a mountain and a mox jet, by the way. There's a second planes from Philco, tapping two. What are we gonna see? A white knight, perhaps? Ooh, disenchant. Slowing me down there, disenchant on the mox and a pass turn. Yeah, I mean, I can't really do anything with just two mana at this point. Passing the turn back here. Let's see what Philco can do. Can he find some of his uh, knights? Ooh, there's a uh, blacksmith. I believe it's a 1-2. And But more importantly, it's got protection from red. A card from Arabian Knights coming in from the sideboard. So this is really good against my deck. There's another Badlands. I'm going to play, for example, an Itwin Ifrit having three red now. That would be helpful. Nope, just passing the turn. Oh, it's not looking good for me. I mean, he can just attack me for one. That's not a problem. But just the fact it's got protection from red. I mean, that's such... It's so annoying. It's so good against me. Anyway, yeah, there's the attack for one. Dropping to 19. And second main, what is he going to play? Order of a Light Burr. So this is the uh, Pump Knight from Fallen Empires. So you can, for one white, you can give it first strike. And for uh, two, uh, two white, you can give it plus one, plus O. Oh, so you can kind of pump it. Make it bigger. And I think, yeah, I think that's it. So passing the turn back to me here. I mean, I need to start playing something out or at least take care of the pump knight. Maybe just a bolt, playing two bolts main. A weakness I cannot cast on the Order of Lightbird because it has protection from, uh, from black. So I've got a grip full of cards, but I don't think I've got a good option because I'm really in the tank here. 
just passing the turn. Okay, so maybe I've got some instant action going, hopefully. Let's see what Philco is going to do in his turn. It looks like he wants to tap the two white. What are we going to see? Changing his mind. Attacking first. That makes sense. So three damage. Going to drop to 16. Second main. Tapping two white. And yep, there's a white knight. More pressure on the board. I guess an earthquake would be nice. There's a strip mine. Okay, tapping. Ooh, playing an org. 6-6. Six, six. And the org is actually, yes, I mean, I cannot, you know, it doesn't work well against the blacksmith because protection from um uh protection from, from red, but at least it can block the white knight, it can block the order of light Of course, the problem with the order of light is. Oh no, sleight of mind. Oh, that's so annoying. Okay, he's going to choose the uh, Order of Lightbird to give it protection from red. But I want to say the Order of Lightbird, he can also just pump to three. So maybe in this case, it would have been better to go for the White Knight, actually give it protection from black. Because then you can continue attacking. Then again, by giving the Order of Lightbird protection from, from red, you're protecting it from a lightning bolt for example. So there's something to say for that as well. And Philco could, if he wanted to, have an attack here. Oh, there he goes. Going to pump it up. Going to deal three points of damage. Going to drop to 13. Passing the turn. Okay, so no more pressure from him on the board. At least that's something. I really need to start killing some creatures. Okay, there's a weakness, which I can now play because of that sleight of mind. So that's kind of funny. So that's going to die. And of course, Philco didn't see weakness yet, so didn't know it was in the deck. There's the attack, there's the blocks. It's going to soak up all the damage. I think you don't take any trample damage, but it looks like we're going to try to find out how this, uh, this rule actually works. Okay, it looks like we figured it out. So here you can see it on your screen. So what happens is it deals damage to the creature until it's lethal and the rest of the damage tramples over to the opponent. So in this case, Philco still takes four points of damage. So going to drop to 16. So it's actually not that great for him. He also played a Rook Ag here. So the tables have really turned after this weakness to take care of that uh, order of, uh, of Light Burr. So now it's up to Fulco to find a solution again. Can of course attack for one with the blacksmith, but then next turn he has to deal with the orc. I mean the swords will be just the, the, the best solution here, just the swords on the orc, get rid of it. Another way, of course, would be by just playing a Northern Paladin, which is a 3-3. So that means he's got a creature of 3 or greater. I can no longer attack with my Orc. So there are a couple of solutions. Another Order of Lightbird could be a solution because he can pump it to 3-1. And then again, I can no longer attack with the Orc. So there are a few things he can do. But the question, of course, is does he have these cards in his hand? And if he doesn't, it's going to be really tough. So now he's going to read the Rook Egg. So the Rook Egg is an 0-3 creature. And uh, when it dies, I get a 4-4 Flying Bird token at the uh, next end step. So it looks like he is going to attack with the Blacksmith. I cannot block it because of protection from red. So I'm going to take a damage, drop to 12. But that's it, it seems. So it's looking good for me. I guess first point of business is just to attack here with the orc. Okay, putting my bad land separate. Looks like I've got an earthquake in hand there. I think I saw that. Okay, tapping some mana here. What are we going to see? Tapping four. Earthquake for three. Yeah, it's going to destroy the White Knight, not the Blacksmith, but it's also going to destroy my Rook Egg. Now I'm going to attack. Wow, look at that damage. He's on seven. And of course, I'm going to get a 4-4 Rook token 
at the end of the turn, so that's really good. There's the Rook token, so 4-4 four, four Flying Bird. Yeah, it's, it's looking really bad here for, for Philco again. Okay, there's a balance. That's something. Yeah. What to do now? I've got no more cards in hand, so he's going to lose his entire hand here. But of course... Oh, no, I do have cards in hand. For a moment, I thought I had no cards because I didn't see my hand. I've got four in hand. Looks like I'm going to... Put the orc away. That makes sense. I mean, I haven't seen a lot of flyers on Philco's side, so having having a flying creature pretty much means you've got an unblockable creature in this match. Gonna discard a shatter, so we both have three cards in hand. So we have uh same amount of lance. He's gonna attack with the smith and then play another white knight. Okay. Ooh, and now I can put him on three, so he's on a, on a two-turn clock. He's got one more turn after this. I'm tempted. I am going to use the strip mine here. I'm not sure if that's a good decision. I think because he's got Tundras anyway, I think I should have kept... Maybe I'm worried about, about that he can cast something. Oh, I've got a flash fires. Yeah, now it makes sense. Oh, ho, 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 this is brutal. This is the nail in the coffin. Because I was like, why would I take care of that island? But I had a flash fires. Oh man, this is brutal. He needs a swords. Swords to plowshares. But I think uh, he's signaling that he doesn't have it. I'm on five. If he has a swords, does he have a sword? No, he doesn't. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I have to say this is, this is, I remember this game, of course, it's not unexpected, but looking back at it now, also looking at the list and, uh, you know, Phil got such a good list against me. I feel really, really lucky and I just had the, the right cards at the right time. I think the end there with the flash fires was really, really good. Strip mining, the island, then the flash fires. Yeah, that was great. And of course I had to do that because I had to make sure they, that he couldn't play a blue elemental blast on my flesh fire. So that all made sense. Um, yeah, wow. So winning uh, the first match here at the Zombie Cup number three. Now, if you're enjoying this, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring that bell because then you are not going to miss a thing because I have more action coming from the Zombie Cup uh, next week. So then you can see another episode from this great tournament. And um, before I say goodbye to you, first a little note here that Philco actually won the flavor prize with his beautiful deck and of course his fantastic outfit. So he won the, uh, the flavor award. I actually forgot what the flavor award was. Was it a booster of Fallen Empires? I think so, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, but anyway, he won. So congratulations with that. Um, and uh, before you go, uh, please also take a moment to like, comment, and share on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can, of course, still become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for all the information. And if you become a patron at the $2 level, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Somba Kazik!